Well, welcome everyone. I'm going to put this PowerPoint up here. And I'm going to share. You, can you hear that? Okay. Y'all see my ships here? We can. Oh, can. <laughs> okay, great. So let me give you, first of all, let me give you a little bit of background information on who American Cruise Lines is, okay? We have been in business 35 years. American Cruise Lines is headquartered in Gulf, Guilford, Connecticut. We build our ships in the shipyard that we own on the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, we are a family owned operation and currently there are 12 ships in our fleet, soon to be 13 coming this fall and another one on the way after that. So we build them, we own them, we sail them, we staff them. Now we are one of very few US registered cruise lines which means we play by a different set of rules than uh, ships that are a foreign registry. And one of the requirements when you are US registered is that you must have at least 75% of your crew to be US citizens. We choose to do 100% of our crew to be US citizens. So all of our deck and engine, all of our hotel staff, they are all US citizens. Uh, all of our ships are going to be with beautiful outside cabins and very small ships. We do nothing larger than 190 beds. That is the biggest we go. All of them have outside, they're all outside cabins and they all have a private balcony as well. Wonderful ships, single seating in our dining rooms and it is open seating. And because we are small enough, our ships are able to provide fresh food, nothing's frozen. Think of us as a 190 seat restaurant, if you look at it that way. We don't have to freeze things, it's all fresh. We do lots of local provisioning, when it's available to us, like now when all the farmer's markets are available and the wonderful fresh seafood. Uh, we also have a number of itineraries you may not be familiar with, and I'll show you a lot of those as well. Before we go any further, I wanna tell you that we are starting up and we are the first cruise line to go. Charlie, is that you? No. We are the first cruise line to start sailing again, and we will begin sailing again on the 20th of June on the Lower Mississippi River with the American Song. That will be followed by our Alaska series of sailings that will begin on the 26th of June out of Juneau with the American Constellation, followed by on the 28th of June, the American Harmony on the Columbia and Snake River. And we are thrilled. Uh, Mr. Robertson was on the ABC Midday News, uh, middle of the week with Amy Robach talking about the ach achievement that we have to be the first going back in the river. Our uh, COVID protocol was accepted wonderfully by the CDC as well as by the US Coast Guard. So we're going back in the water. The requirements are going to be different. We are going to limit the capacity of our ships. So we are dropping the capacity by 25%. This is voluntary. We will do no more than 75% capacity on any of our ships right now. Our guests are all receiving prior to arriving to the ships. They will receive a set of PPE from us that includes masks, it includes gloves, and it includes a uh, gown, apron, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we also, of course, have that supply on the ship as well. All of our staff has been thoroughly trained in what they are to do and to recognize if anyone becomes ill. They are, passengers are all screened prior to getting on board. We have medical staff on board the ship as well at all times. All public areas are being cleaned hourly, which means all of the elevators, anything that anyone might touch is being cleaned hourly. And very important to understand is that your cabin has no shared uh, piping or venting in the HVAC system. None, every cabin, every public room, as its own standalone HVAC system. So nothing is being shared, and that's very important to understand. So without further ado, I hope you guys have speakers turned up because the next slide you're definitely gonna to wanna to hear. Hang on, I wanna make sure it's louder. Can you hear it? No. Can you hear it now? 
It's Charlie Daniels. <laughs> Do I have to unmute to hear it? No. no. Yeah, it's a it's a feature of the program, unfortunately. So sorry about that, that you couldn't hear it. That is our commercial that has not been running for some time. It will be run again. It's the voiceover by Charlie Daniels, and it gives you some idea of uh, some of the things and some of the places that American Cruise Lines travels on our itineraries. And this slide will tell you the same thing. 35 plus itineraries across 25 states is where we operate. So we are not just doing the Mississippi River. Think of us on the main coast in Acadia National Park is one of the places you'll visit. Down in the New England area, over on the Hudson River Valley, the beautiful Mid-Atlantic and Chesapeake Bay where we do an American Revolution cruise, the Inside Passage down into Florida, Charleston down to Amelia Islands, the Great Rivers of Florida, across the Ohio River, the Cumberland Sherry, your favorite, where we're doing Nashville to Memphis or reverse. Of course, both upper and lower portions of the Mississippi River, and yes, you can do the entire length if you choose to do so, from the Twin Cities all the way down to New Orleans, or reverse. Out west, the Columbian Snake River, amazingly popular between Portland and Spokane for air service. Uh, in Seattle, we're doing Puget Sound and the San Juans and Alaska. And we do Alaska from Juneau. Now, let me just stop with Alaska for one second, because Canada has told everybody, we'll see you in 2021. No ships are being allowed to call in Canada the remainder of the year, which means Alaska sailings are gonna be greatly affected because they sail in Vancouver. We don't. Our cruise is all inside passage and we do not include Canada on the itinerary. So you get all the beauty of the inside passage, you get all the wonderfulness of being in Alaska, the wilderness and the wildlife and such, but you're not going to Canada. So we are anticipating without fail that Alaska season to kick off June 26 from Juneau. This is a sample of a New England itinerary for you out of Boston. We're going to go either down to Provincetown and the islands down uh, around P-Town or up north from there to Bar Harbor. These itineraries are going to be done when the weather allows it to be the best. So this for July and August. So we can do a lobster bake or a clam bake. It's great, and we do that on the beach. Think of American Cruise Lines and our small ships as a country club. We're a very simple sophistication. There is no dress code. No fashion police are going to be there to tell you what you can and you cannot wear on the ship. We want you to be comfortable, get to know the people you're sailing with, visit the wonderful places, and enjoy all of the shore tours that are going to be included along the way. So what sets us apart? These are just a list of a few things. We have the largest staterooms of any cruise ships on the Great Rivers of America. I mentioned all private balconies in every cabin. Complimentary featured shore tours are included on every itinerary and they are not hop on and hop off. Woo! They are escorted tours. There's an elevator that takes people all the way top to bottom without fail. Twice daily room service or daily stateroom service is available. The uh, cabin stores will clean your cabin when you're going to have breakfast and out on your tours. And again, in the evening when you're having dinner and you will have the same cabin service attendant throughout the entire trip. I'll come back to the gratuity for you. Uh, complimentary Wi-Fi is offered on every single sailing. I mentioned the food, it's absolutely incredible. It's locally inspired, locally sourced. Complimentary cocktail party is offered on every voyage, every evening, about an hour prior to dinner. There is wonderful daily entertainment. It's the all-American experience. I mentioned before, we are uh, required to do 75% of our crew to be U.S., and we choose to do 100%. And beer and wine are included complimentary, unlimited with both lunch and dinner. Now, let's go back to the gratuity for a second. On American Cruise Lines, you do not tip our staff. We will not ask for it, and we will not accept gratuities. 
again, it's the all-American experience. We take really good care of our staff, and they will not ask you for a gratuity, ever. Uh, the beer and wine that's complimentary with lunch and dinner actually starts at about oh, 11 o'clock in the morning in the lounges and continues throughout the day and into the evening. You will not pay for a beverage on the ship at all. And if you're not a beer and wine drinker, but you'd rather have a dirty martini with dinner, all you do is tell the dining room staff and they're going to get it for you. And they're not going to bill you for it. Now, this is along, of course, New England. The uh, Newport, Rhode Island is known for their beautiful mansions. That's one of the shore tours that's offered on that New England sailing. The southeastern itinerary that gives you an example from Baltimore down to Norfolk over to Kitty Hawk and such, and then Charleston on down to Amelia Island, Fernandina Beach, and then into the Great Rivers of Florida. Everybody's been to Savannah once or twice, I'm sure, but Savannah's a really magical place. I always think of uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil when I look at this slide. Now, the mighty Mississippi. I mentioned you can go from the Twin Cities all the way down to New Orleans, and you certainly can. That's 21 nights if you choose to do so. Or you can break it up. Go from the Twin Cities down to St. Louis, then St. Louis down to Memphis, Memphis down to New Orleans, or do the reverse, whichever way you choose to do it. Again, we're doing this when the weather allows it to be the best. So you will see that itinerary in the middle of the summer, but you don't go to the Twin Cities in November. The other itinerary you see on the right side of your screen is uh, Sherry's favorite, Nashville to Memphis, and the Ohio River. And if y'all have never been to Madison, Indiana, or uh, some of those fun little places along the Ohio River, that's where the Madison Boat Regatta is uh, every year in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's great. Uh, Henderson, Kentucky is on that itinerary, and among other things, the Audubon Society started there, and it's still there, and there's a fabulous shoe store, by the way, that's right here in Anderson, Kentucky, where I visit every time I go. Ah, the king, Memphis, Tennessee. Graceland is one of the shore tours, and by the way, Graceland opened about a week ago. Again, made me very happy when I heard that the king's house was open again. This is a shot of Mount St. Helen with her top blown off. And as you can see on that uh, right-hand side of your screen, itinerary is from Portland to, it's actually Clarkston, Idaho, or the reverse. Spokane would be your closest air service on that east end of the trip. But you can do it either way. You can fly into Spokane, get on the ship in Clarkston, or the reverse, get on it on the ship in Portland and sail as far as you want to. This is the last leg of the Lewis and Clark expedition. You will learn a whole lot about Lewis and Clark. It also happens to be that fabulous Wilmette wine region. Fabulous wines coming out of there. Absolutely glorious seafood coming out of there. And a beautiful steamer. You'll pick out a lot of really nice real estate along the way. And if you look at the left side from Seattle, we're going into the San Juan Islands, which is a wonderful little place to visit. Beautiful, again, beautiful homes in that area. It's a very fun trip. It's uh, Monoma Falls along the way in Stevenson, Washington. You'll get a short tour to there. In Skagway, the Yukon Gateway journey, the train ride, may not happen this year, quite frankly, because it generally goes to Canada. So that may not happen, but we'll see. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the fleet. What you're looking at is the newest in our fleet. That's the American Song. The American Harmony followed. The American Jazz will come out in the fall and the American Melody next year. These are brand new luxury river ships, modern river ships that were built in our yard in the Chesapeake. 190 passengers capacity. They are sister ships, not twins, but they are sisters. 190 capacity, all outside cabins, all with a private balcony. And yes, you can board through the nose. It's really cool. Now, we don't use this feature in every port. Baton Rouge and New Orleans both have a wonderful um, docking facility. But in Natchez, Mississippi, we did use it when I was on the ship in December. And it's really fun. Oh, and by the way, we also instituted a touchless boarding system, uh, which we had previously, so your swipe card just Hold it up and it's automatically going to check you in, check you off the ship so we know you're on and off. And that is a veranda suite on the song. The beds, by the way, are king size beds. Most ships do queens, we do kings, and all beds can be split. So you simply tell us you want one bed or two. It's that simple. We'll make it either way. 
This is a beautiful atrium on the song. We also have a, a fleet that includes authentic paddle wheelers. The Queen of the Mississippi is our ship. America is our ship. The Queen of the West is our ship. These are authentic paddle wheelers, no more than 175 capacity. And again, all the way, 100% American, all outside cabins, all of the balcony. And this is a stateroom on America. That bed's been split obviously into two. The paddle wheel lounge on the America. The third operation that we run are small coastal ships. Now this is what we use in Alaska, the Constellation. The Constitution we use on the East Coast when we do New England and such. So these are coastal vessels, no more than 175 passengers when they're full. And again, all outside cabins, all with balconies. And that's gonna give you an idea of what the Constitution's veranda suite looks like. And the Sky Lounge on the Constellation. Constellation does Alaska for us. So you're sitting in this beautiful lounge and you see a whale reach, fabulous. Or an eagle fly by the window. This is the upper deck of the Harmony, and there is a putting green. Now, please remember, this is a putting green, folks. It's not a driving range, so you're welcome to use it, but it's a putting green. Again, the private balconies with unobstructed views. So when the puffins fly by you in Alaska, you'll see them. Complimentary cocktail party I mentioned is offered every evening on every sailing. Whatever you would like, the bartenders will be happy to make it for you. That's the beautiful dining room of the Harmony. Again, it's open seating and it's single seating. So you come in that dining room anytime between 5.30 and 7.30 in the evening and you will be seated without problem. You can sit anywhere you want with anyone you choose. We also are instituting some alternative dining and that includes an outdoor dining option and room service will be available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, I want that right now. Yes, we do clam bakes on the beach when we're in Alaska, or excuse me, when we're in New England. Clam bakes and lobster bakes, and boy, is it wonderful. And it's really fun. World-class entertainment is on board every evening. When I was recently on the Harmony in New Orleans, the uh, singing group from the US World War II Museum came on board, and they're called the Victory Bells. And they're in Andrews, uh, sisters inspired group and they were absolutely phenomenal. They were great. I told you about Lewis and Clark. He's going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about Lewis and Clark. And the lectures on the lower Mississippi will tell you more about the Anaconda plan in the Civil War than again you thought you'd ever know. Every one of our cruises includes featured shore excursions complimentary for all guests. A premium shore excursion is one that you would simply buy on board if you choose to do so. They generally run between $20 and $70 per person. And a signature tour is one that's got some limited capacity and requires pre-booking and prepayment because there aren't many spaces available. So those you book ahead of time. And here's some examples coming up too. Oh, by the way, on all of our river ships, we do complimentary one night pre-cruise hotel stay, which includes your breakfast the morning of embarkation, transfer to the ship, as well as luggage borderage. Uh, the first few cruises, we are not doing the one night hotel. We're gonna have you come on the ship one night early because we know it's clean and safe and we wanna make sure the hotels are before we put anybody in there. It's part of our All-American crew right here. And we have a wonderful special right now with Sherry and that is $600 per cabin savings on any sailing that you book until the end of this month. Any sailing where there's space, it is subject to availability. Well, that ship looks like it got a lot longer, but <laughs> any sailing that you have is gonna be offered at $600 per cabin savings for you. So keep that in mind, double or single. Um, I thought I had more pictures of short here, but I don't, so. I will tell you that when you're on the Colombian Snake River, 
Uh, Mount St. Helens is included as a, as a uh, featured shore tour, so you will get to go to Mount St. Helens. Won't be any additional cost. If you want to go to Graceland and spend a couple extra days, we do have a VIP package. That's a signature tour. Does need to be booked ahead of time. And you get a private tour of Graceland as well as, hold on to your hat, cocktails in the jungle room. So anybody who's an Elvis fan, just keep that in mind. Um, one of our premium shore tours is Acadia National Park in Maine. And it is uh, not open yet, but it's opening in July. And if you want to go to Acadia National Park, that's going to cost you about $20 to go to Acadia National Park. And by the way, it's worth it. That's where the U.S. first sees the sunshine every day. So I, I have no other slides for you, Sherry. I'm done. All right. Who's got questions? Uh, one of them that I'm thinking about, Linda, is air. Air mm -hmm. fare. Do you all provide? We do air not. Air? Uh, sure, we do what we do uh, best, and that is not air. <laughs> we are simply not in the air business. We wouldn't know how to do it if we had to do it. Okay. Well, that's something that we can take care of. So that's not. And an keep issue in mind, either. many of our um, many of our itineraries, as you saw the map across the U.S., many of our itineraries are driving destinations. There's also train service that will be coming back in a lot of these places. So it doesn't always have to be an air flight. I, I'm thinking about like the Nashville yes. to Memphis, and I know that we could start yes. here and rent a car yep. in Memphis and drive back, which would not be a, a problem. Which would cost you about 50 bucks. <laughs> right. Same, same thing with St. Louis. Yes. You can, you can do, we could uh, uh, do a cruise to St. Louis and just yep. drive back if we need exactly. to. Exactly. Another question that I've got before anybody else is of uh, handicap facilities. Yes. Um, again, being U.S. registered, we are 100% ADA certified. We must be under U.S. law. Every ship has quote unquote handicapped cabins. So for someone who is confined to a chair that needs to be able to roll into the shower, yes, there are uh, cabin availability. Now, I will tell you, there are not many and they do go quickly. So, um, we do carry, by the way, a golf cart on the ship, on all the ships, more than one. For anyone who has mobility issues and needs to have the golf cart to take them to the top of the levee to go to Oak Alley, for example, uh, which is, you know, can be a hefty little walk up there. I personally take the golf cart. So we carry those with us. So if you have a mobility problem, not an issue. We can also, by the way, accommodate any dietary requirement there is. I don't care what it is. We can accommodate anything and the first day that you board the ship after you have lunch and and by the way we've never had buffets and we never will so all of our food is plated so after you have your nice lunch there will be a meeting with the chefs on the ship and they will take notes as to what dietary requirements people have and then they take your picture and the reason they do that is because that picture and what your requirements are hangs in the galley in the kitchen so that the servers know what your requirements are as well. Since you don't have to sit at the same table every night, we want everybody to know that you can't have ice cream or you can't have dairy or whatever the case may be. So there's a question just now about if the $600 for state room discount applied only to 2020 sailings or... or no, 2021 as well. Okay. Yep, it's good for both, Charlie. Who else has got questions? You guys are awfully quiet. You can unmute yourself and ask. You're welcome to. I had to share with you some years ago, Sherry and I did Louisville, I'm sorry, St. Louis to Louisville on another river cruise line. And the cruise itself was just absolutely delightful. The sites you get to see are those that you would never see if you even if you drove you would be on such fortuitously winding small roads to get back to some of these places some of them are really not that accessible by vehicle at all and the the experience of seeing that part of america in a way that is reminiscent of the time gone by to me was, was quite satisfying the one thing that was not as satisfying that is addressed by American Cruise Line 
to the accommodations. It was that we were on a riverboat that was built at the beginning of the 20th century or thereabouts. And of uh, necessity, it, it was not as modern and convenient and well appointed as American Free Line statement. So the combination of unique itinerary being close to home and being in a comfortable, brightly lighted, pleasant environment is a hard combination to be. We've got another question for you, Linda. Uh, sure. What kind of uh, things do you have for groups? Are there discounts? Are there? Yes, there are. And a group is five cabins or more. Okay. So five uh, folks that want to travel together um, will earn, earn a group. And there is a group rate. It varies, of course, from sailing, sailing ship to ship based upon availability. And again, keep in mind that our ships are small. So and they're very popular. They have lots of return business. So uh, for that reason, it's never too early to book, shall we say. <laughs> um, and, and you know, again, we know that Canada has said, no, bye-bye, you're not coming back to Canada this year, which means, as you know, Sherry, all those Canada New England fall foliage cruises had to be canceled. But I still have the Hudson River Valley for fall foliage, but it's 175 passenger ship. <laughs> so is it's gonna be real popular. Is there still availability? There is. There is currently. I checked it, to be honest with you, because I love that itinerary and have done it several times myself. And yes, there is some availability. Yes. What are your deposit and final payment policy? Um, deposit is at time of booking, it's 500 per person. And final payment is 90 days out. Okay. Now, we do have a program that we've instituted, and we always offered insurance as well, but we do have a program that we instituted in light of the COVID-19 issues, and it's called Cruise with Comfort. And it is a program that you simply tell us you want to opt into or don't. It's entirely up to the passenger. But it was designed to provide peace of mind. And what it allows is that you would be able to cancel if you choose to or need to for any reason. I don't care if you've got a bad hair day or bad manicure. It doesn't matter up until 24 hours prior to the start of your program with us, and we will issue you a cruise voucher good for through 2021 season. I'm sure that will be extended, and it is for full value. You don't lose one penny. It's full value. So if you've given us only deposit and decide you want to do that, that's fine. If you paid us in full, that's fine. You will get the full amount on a future cruise voucher. And up until 24 hours, prior to the start of your package, which is unheard of, I think, in the industry. Who else has got questions? No one? You know, I had a, I had a conversation with a gentleman a couple of weeks ago, very nice man, who told me that he's river cruised many times in Europe, and, and the, the um, American Cruise Lines passenger a lot of times are river cruisers from Europe as well. They enjoy river cruising. Um, he's been to the top of the Eiffel Tower five times, which is fabulous. And it's a wonderful place to go and a wonderful place to visit. And I asked him if he'd ever been to the top of the arch in St. Louis. And he said, no. And I reminded him he could probably see Paris from the top of the arch in St. Louis. <laughs> so he needed to make a trip <laughs> to St. Louis. <laughs> he agreed with me. <laughs> There are so many wonderful sites in this beautiful country of ours to visit that, um, you know, I mean, I mentioned the Audubon Society in Evansville, Indiana, which is across the river from Henderson, Kentucky. That is a fabulous place to visit. I know this is going to sound like it's paint drying, but go to the museum in Paducah, Kentucky, which is the quilting museum. It'll take your breath away. It's gorgeous. It is. We, we went to that. I was just going to say a few minutes ago, that's yes. one place that really surprised us was Paducah. Yes. I was not anticipating that. And, and to think they're all hand, and it's a lost art. Nobody does it anymore. Where it's is in this place? Where's Audubon's home? It's up in that area also. No, it? Evansville. Evansville, Indiana. Yeah. It's great. It's beautiful. That was really interesting. The pleasant surprise for me was the Patton Museum. Uh, the, the artifacts and the information on that because I'm a, I'm a World War II enthusiast. 
was the fact that we passed that. And, and in that same vein, the half Lewis and Park on the Snake River, right. simply because of the historic nature of it. So I mentioned on the lower Mississippi, um, you learned so much about the Anaconda plan. If I had had a history teacher like the lecturer that was on that ship that talked about the Anaconda plan and the Battle of Vicksburg, and I believe me, I would have done a lot better in history when it came to Civil War time. This guy was phenomenal. And he's on there on a very regular basis. Uh, the guide that takes you to the Battle of Vicksburg, to the battlefield, knows every rock and points them out along the way. It is, and you understand what happened at that time. And Vicksburg was as important in the South as Gettysburg was in the North, and those battles were going on at the same time. So it's, it's pretty amazing when you go to these wonderful places. My favorite little place on the lower Mississippi itinerary is St. Francisville, Louisiana. Little bitty baby burg of a town. And there's a wonderful little shop there called My Grandmother's Buttons, where you can buy beautiful jewelry and purses and tchotchkes and just fun little things. It's a wonderful little place. And have lunch in a little cafe that's fabulous. Food. It'll cost you three fifty for the greatest burger you'll ever eat. <laughs> these are the kinds of wonderful things you do on these trips. As you meet people on the ship, get to know them and make some lifelong friendships and life, have lifelong relationships. Who else has got a question for Linda while we've got her on here? I don't have a question. More information about the protocol. Uh, Terrell, what is, what is your question? Uh, we, we just want to know what the protocol is regarding masks and whether we'll be required to wear them except when eating. We are highly encouraging uh, that our guests do wear masks. We are not going to make anybody leave the ship if they don't. Our staff is required at all times to wear masks and gloves. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else has a question? Can you hear me? It's Roberta. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, when do you do the Lower Mississippi? What what time of year is it? We actually do the Lower Mississippi year round. Okay. Uh, that is the one place on our itineraries where we can be in the winter. So we are there all year round in New Orleans. And, and the know, one that goes the one that goes from Nashville to Memphis. Yeah. How many days is that? They're all seven nights with one night pre hotel stay. With a few exceptions, there's a 10 day cruise here, a 10 day cruise there, but most of them for rule of thumb are gonna be seven night sailings with one night free hotel. Okay, and that's the Na and what time of year do you do the Nashville one? Uh, Nashville to Memphis is done in the summertime, Sherry, when it's as hot as it can be. It is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way, we are able to come all the way into Nashville and back on Lower Broad. Oh, cool. And, and then it, because we can get under the bridges. Yeah, that's that's the key to it is being able to get under those bridges. And so that's very okay. important. So we're going to take people to the Ryman Auditorium, of course. We're going to take people to the Grand Ole Opry. We're going to do all those wonderful things. We're going to have an opportunity to go to Beale Street and enjoy both, you know, blues and country music on that itinerary. Uh, it's a wonderful trip. And you can also watch the Ducks at Peabody, which is right up from Beale Street. Is there a, a uh, an itinerary that goes Memphis to Nashville? Yes. Because that's where, for those of us that live in Middle Tennessee, we may want to go down and spend a night in Memphis and yep. then sail and just go. And then cruise back home, sure. Yeah. Yep. Do you provide marketing material? I'm sorry? Do you provide any marketing material? Like you want to try oh, to get sure. a group together? Okay. Yep. yep. Our website's loaded with all kinds of information that you can't imagine. Please contact us. Okay? Contact the agency, Roberta. We'll take care of that for you. I okay. share email. Who else has got a question? Well, there's a question here about whether or not there are any theme cruises. I'm not sure if we're looking There at are. There are. And they're centered around two of my favorite things, which is food, wine, and music. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, your food and wine sailings are going to be Nashville to Memphis as a, um, a music cruise. And out west on the Columbian Snake River, we have a series of wine cruises that are phenomenal. 
and have brought on wine experts that are coming from some of the local wineries in the Wilmette Valley. We're going to take you to some wine tastings that you wouldn't ordinarily get to do. It's a wonderful package. And those are spread out throughout the course of the season. Now, you know, the best time to be out on the Colombian Snake River is typically going to be August to October. Uh, it's a little rainy there in the spring, which you've already passed, of course, and it can be a little bit chilly once we get past October. So we do that basically April to October. Do you have a catalog? Mm -hmm. Sure do. Sherry can get one for you. Yeah. Um, I'll get one for you, Janet. Thank you. I do better with catalogs. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, all of the itineraries are going to be in there, too. So, you know, again, 35 itineraries is a lot. So... You just need I'd to like get to have a list and, and just start checking them off. Janet, we'll be able to, uh, I'll oh. order some and have one sent to you, just, just straight to you, okay? Okay, that'd be great. I know that their website has got all of this on it, their itineraries and everything. I also awesome. know that a lot of people really want to have that brochure in front of them to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we can print it. What was that, Charlie? Roberta, would you like a hard copy of the book? If channel? I can print it off the website, I could probably do that. You, okay. can, you can do that. Yes, yeah. I mean, sure, I'm like you. I bought a Kindle for the longest time because I like to hold things in my hand. I like the feel of a book in my hand. <laughs> but then I realized I was taking 20 books on a cruise ship, and that was nuts, and I could put 20 on a Kindle. So. <laughs> if I can print, like, specific itinerary that I'm, you know, trying to get the group going, then I could print as many copies as I need, so I don't really need book. We'd like to get a catalog too, please. We can take care of that, Rich. Thank you. Rich, are you looking at any particular itinerary? Do you have any idea about what river you might want to travel on? Or? Well, see, the problem is you offer too many choices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I like the Mississippi, like the lower Mississippi. I like Nashville, Memphis. I like the Northwest. I like to see the colors in the in the fall, oh, the Northeast. Foliage. Yeah, you know you can get colors on the Upper Mississippi too, from out of St. Paul, out of the Twin Cities. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. But I don't I don't have anything in particular. We, when you were mentioning the wine cruise and the food cruise, that sort of piqued our attention right there. Well, uh, there you go. Yeah. Kindred souls we are. <laughs> <laughs> So who else has a question? Nobody? Well, guys, we appreciate everybody being here today. Um, if we have, if you have any questions at all, you can contact Charlie or I either. We'll be happy to help you. Um, I don't know what else I need to tell you. Anyone? Just thank you for hosting this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I would like to thank you as well for allowing me to take up a part of your Sunday afternoon here. I know that you have a lot going on these days, and thank you for letting me take up a part of your Sunday afternoon. And I, I think you will find that American Cruise Lines is never going to disappoint you. And guys, this is our alternative for us not having to travel internationally right now. I know everybody's wanting to stay closer to home. You want to be someplace where you can, if if something happened and you needed to get home, you could be, you could get in a car and drive home and it wouldn't be an issue. Even if it's across country, you could still do that. And we, we understand that that is a, a mm -hmm. concern that our clients have. Uh, we also know that flying right now is a concern that people have. And so if you can do one of these, that's going to be a little bit closer where you're within driving distance, then it just makes it where you can still have a vacation this year. And that's the good part. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you all again. Thank you, Miss Linda, for doing this with us. We yeah, appreciate your help. And uh, it. if you have questions, just contact us. Uh, you should just, you'll be able to find our contact information on our Facebook page with justcruisingplus.com. Um, and you can call us anytime and we'll be glad to help you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.